I'm one of the staunchest followers of Ayurved possible. And I think uh, the belief has come from my own uh, journey to cure my own disease. Uh, I'm suffering from rheumatoid arthritis. I have a very hard illness. And then Dr. Krumpas, my doctor, brought me here to the Ayurveda. I had water in my feet, thick water, and, um, and pains all over. I've been uh, trying these Ayurvedic treatments for the last three years now. Um, ever since I had an attack of a pancreas infection actually about three years ago. Before I came to this institution, I knew a little bit about Ayurveda. Um, basically because I, I have a skin issue, so it's something it's called psoriasis, similar to eczema. And recently I had a stroke with the weakness to my right hand. Um, the allopathic treatment come to an end where they could not give me any more. When I had a labrum tear, when everybody said I need to do a surgery, I will be off cricket for six to seven months. I came here uh, and I missed the test series in Australia and I had to take a decision between a surgery or come back to Ayurvedic. And when I began, from the first moment on, Everything goes to be better. My, I found my soul, the water out, out, uh, out of my feet went out, the pains left me, and so I came back to the normality and I can handle everything very good. I could move my fingers, I could do my own work. In about three treatments, which is about three years, I was 95% fit. She came to us with very severe uh, pain in both knees actually and now I'm seeing her already six months um, after the end of the active uh, um, trial treatment and she's symptom free regarding her knees so you know this is not me or my team it's Ayurveda that is working and it's fantastically working. But then now I'm finding a little bit more belief in it because it's true because it's a very uh, organic way of reacting with your body like I mean, people have had the system for years and years put together. They're not fools, right? So it is not that uh, you expect them to uh, give you things which are about 5,000 years old. They give you things which are 5,000 years old along with the 21st century. Ayurveda is the science of 21st century. Ayurveda is actually futuristic medicine. Ayurveda is not a medicine of past at all. In my opinion, everything starts from the mind in any case, you know. <laughs> So uh, we, we, we cannot ignore it and I would say 20% of diseases should be treated by modern medicine and the remaining by Ayurveda and all the 100 other systems that also exist. The allopathic medicine and this ancient medicine combine, combinedly I think can be immense benefit to humanity. <laughs> На протяжении ста осени нам можно видеть. На протяжении ста осени нам можно жить. На протяжении ста осени нам можно узнавать. На протяжении ста осени нам можно подрастать. Ригведа состоит из трех направлений, известных как три сутра Айурведы. Вторая и третья веды, самоведа и яджудведа, связаны соответственно с пением мантр и проведением различных обрядов. В четвертой веде, Адхарва веде, Айурведа является уповедой, или подразделом.
to understand this you need to realize that the vedas actually represent a psychological process of the human mind the, the first three vedas the rik yajus and the sama represent three powers of the human mind that is the power of knowledge the power of action and the power of will so they are together known as the trai now atharva veda is the fourth veda it is the veda of compensation of rectification of correction when the harmony between your knowledge the action and the will is disturbed you have to forcefully bring it back into harmony the fourth veda or the atharva veda therefore represents that you know re establishment of the harmony In a similar way, from the ritualistic portions of the Atharva Veda, the more empirical, rational, intellectual expression of Ayurveda emerges. This is very specifically mentioned in one of the Ayurvedic texts called Kashyapa Samhita, which says, "Such a prag Atharva Veda Upanishadsu prag utpanna," that it first originated in the Upanishadic portion of the Atharva Veda. Вся аюрведическая литература основывается на философии под названием Санкья, что означает знать истину. Риши Капила открыл 24 принципа или элемента Вселенной. Прокрити, женская энергия, создает все формы во Вселенной, в то время как Пуруша, мужская энергия, является свидетелем этого творения. Пуруша. Мужская энергия представляет собой дремлющее сознание. Прокрити – это женская энергия, творческая. В трансцендентном состоянии они находятся в гармонии с друг другом. Прокрити играет главную роль, чтобы проявиться в виде танматр или пять чувств, что составляет сущность жизни. Панчатв – пять элементов проявления таких, как эфир, Воздух, огонь, вода и земля. Панча Махабхуты. Пять тонких элементов характерны для пяти элементов проявления. При творении первым проявляется Махат, великий разум. В Махат входят четыре компонента. Ахамкара, эго, читта, память, будхи. Логика и интеллект. Манас – способность отражать. Весь этот спектр при творении регулируется тремя гунами, которые присущи природе – тамас, раджас и сатвы. Три гуны управляют поведением тела, разумом, эмоциями, а также духом. Основным науки об исцелении является учение о значении функций тридоша – жизненной энергии вата, пита, капха. Beautiful aspects of Ayurveda is its tridosha siddhanda or the tridosha principle, based on which everything in Ayurveda works. We say in Ayurveda that a vaidya should be dosha e gadrik. You should see doshas in everything, in human being, in the in the plants kingdom. in the thing which are immovable everything a vaidya should see start seeing doshas and vata pitta and kapha the three doshas which governs the entire universe according to ayurveda and what is this three doshas three doshas are nothing but a recombination in biological system by the different elements which we call as panja mahabhudas ധർമ്മ അർത്ഥ കാമ മോക്ഷാണ് ആരോഗ്യം മൂലമുത്തമം രോഗാസ് അപഹർത്താര ശ്രേയസോ ജീവിതസ്യ ദിസ് ദ അൾട്ടിമേറ്റ് ഒബ്ജക്റ്റീവ് ഓഫ് ആയുർവേദ 
I always say that body is important, but body is not the only thing that is important. Body is important because body is the seat for your mind, and mind and body together become a seat for your consciousness. If you want to improve your consciousness, which is translated into Atma in our time, Atma needs a good, sound seating place. That is the body and mind. Около 1500 года до нашей эры выделились две главные школы аюрведы, а трея – школа врачей и данвантари – школа хирургов. Чарака, придворный врач знаменитого правителя Канишка, был последователем школы врачей Атрея. Шушрута выступает отцом хирургии. Фактически, эти две школы мысли способствовали написанию двух основных трудов по Айурведе – Чарака Самхита и Сушрута Самхита. Айурведо Амрданам – это the rhyme from Veda, which means that Айурведа is nothing but for longevity. And Чарака says Айурведа has no starting, no ending. It is Anadhan and Anadhi, which means the knowledge of Айурведа has been remaining in the universe all the time to come. In that way, the Ayurveda came into literary existence through some hithas like Charaga, Susruda and Vagpada some 3000 years back. The today's Charaga Samhita, which we consider as our basis of Ayurvedic knowledge, is actually a culmination of knowledge generated by Atreya, Punarvasu, then by Agnivesha and others. Король Дханвантри, ведущий врач аюрведической медицины, является воплощением Бога Вишну. Есть четыре главных храма Дханвантри в штате Керала. Самый большой из них находится в деревне Нилувая, района Трисур. And the Lord Dhanandari, it is believed that in his one hand he holds leech and another hand the pot of nectar. So it is a symbol of surgery. And it is Kormba, that is the pot of nectar, uh, that is a symbol of medicine. Every Dhanandari temple there will be some doctors. And these are medical students, when they complete their courses, they will come here and take uh, bhajan here for one week, 21 days, etc. And you know that uh, some offerings in this here. One uh, offering is Mukdi Nivedyam. It is a um, medicine. This is uh, you call decoction and kashaya. That you have to take for all stomach disorders. What is unique about India is that India has one of the richest biodiversities. Also an equally rich knowledge of how to use this biodiversity for preserving and promoting human health. This combination is what makes India very unique. And here we find the medical knowledge actually we can find it in all stages of evolution. Right from tribal medicine to folklore medicine to village medicine to the more learned or sophisticated codified traditions what we call as classical Ayurveda. This is very interesting because the ancient uh, propounders of Ayurveda very, were very humble and they said that we have to learn from nature. You know the first lessons in healthcare are learnt by observing animals. You can find the Adharva Veda saying that the, the medicines that the mongoose knows, the medicines that the eagle knows, let that come to me for help. So, from observing animal life to, you know, tribal uh, situations, 
how tribal uh, healers you know how they discover medicine everything was accounted what the classical stream did was to continuously refine modify and validate these healthcare practices and there what was validated became the classical stream and what remained in the people became the folk stream Между 13 и 17 веками огромное интеллектуальное окружение собралось вокруг храма в штате Керала. В этой среде развилась культура Асхавайтия, смешивая аюрведу Асхагардаем со знанием и практикой местных жителей. По преданию, первоначально 18 семей высшей касты штата Керала были назначены Асхавайдиями, которые и являются мастерами восьми ветвей аюрведы, упомянутых в классических текстах. Even today in modern uh, toxicology it's quite a challenge to you know decide what type of snake has bitten even if it's a poisonous snake the real challenge is to find out whether envenomation has happened they have a linctus which is actually a kind of paste made of various herbs and they apply it on a beetle leaf and ask the patient to chew it like if it is sweet taste then they say that it is great if it is cobra the patient will feel a pungent taste and if it is wiper the patient will feel a sore taste the earlier medicine was an art and an art means that and science was a very important tool of this art right and since we are following science we make it very mechanized and rules and controllable how can you control art an artist has his own creativity and this and that you know so in science we deal with diseases which is deadly in art we deal with life which is healthy В аюрведе концепция диагноза означает то, что каждое мгновение происходит контроль над воздействием порядка на здоровье, расстройство на заболевание в теле. All those things is personal. Personal means interpreting that understanding by asking questions, which is leading to that person, so that we can get explanation of each of these conditions. Несмотря на отсутствие поддержки во время британского правления, в Индии было учреждено много колледжей по обучению аюрведе. Одним из тех первых колледжей был аюрведический колледж в Бенарестском индуистском университете. учрежденного Мадан Мохан Малвия в 1927 году в Варанасе, который был также родиной Сушрута, отца хирургии. В его трактате Сушрута Самхита говорилось в мельчайших деталях, как делать операцию с применением протеза по замене конечностей, косметические операции на носу и других частях. During Sushruta's period, was it in speak? In rhinoplasty, the same technique even today is is used as a forehead flap for the construction of damaged nose. The skin flap is taken from the forehead. The forehead flap is marked, which is in black. This skin flap is rotated over the nose, and the reconstruction is done to create a new nose in case of a damaged nose. Сушрута подробно описал около 125 хирургических инструментов, используемых им, в основном сделанных из камня, дерева и других подобных природных материалов. Два вида инструментов, а именно тупые или янтра и острые или шастра. model of mental health sankhyas believe that uh, 
people cannot apprehend uh, the true nature of the things so for example to say in the most simplest simplistic way uh, if i see a person i see my version of the person the concept of mind the concept of behavior and concept of personality concept of emotions these are all based on tridoshas tridosha is the fundamental biological units of body and mind if you um, want to treat this you have to use pharmacological agents to counter this uh, imbalance in the tridoshas and i worked with patients of parkinson's disease uh, it was a it was a an experience with an very steep learning curve because i interacted with neurologists with basic neuroscientists uh, as also with vaidyas and i used an intervention of uh, panchakarma called basti and it was it was very interesting to find uh, that aspects that are not addressed by modern medicine in patients of parkinson's disease are are helped and benefited by ayurvedic interventions for example non motor symptoms of sleep dysfunction of constipation of smell of speech of anxiety it initiated yet another step of how are we really going to marry these two systems for the benefit of the patient in diverse disease conditions all these diseases are originated because of the body's imbalance diarus says how it can correct the body's imbalances by two methods one is the pacification method samana chigilsa second one is the purification method the purificatory method is shodhana chigilsa the famous pancha karma which we do in almost all good authentic ayurvedic hospitals В юридической медицине терапия панчакармы является терапевтическим средством для выведения токсичных элементов из тела. Во время массажа с применением теплых масел и трав тело освобождается от токсинов через кожу. В юрведе такое лечение маслами называется снегана. При использовании сведана детоксикация тела у пациента происходит посредством выделения пота. Темп лечения, а также применение масел и лекарственных масел из молока и буйволицы выбираются согласно конституции каждого индивида. Успешное лечение при помощи терапии панчакармы помогает избавиться от накопленных токсинов в теле, а йога приводит человека в естественное состояние спокойствия, которое является равновесием. Айрведа complements йога, а йога complements айрведа. Айрведа gives more importance to physical purification and the seat of mind, whereas йога directly interacts with the mind and its action in the body. We say in yoga, chale vade chalam chittam nischale nischalam bhavet. If the mind is in tranquility, the vada principle in the body will be also in balance. Ayurveda and yoga are the sisters of science. Ayurveda and yoga Отец йоги Патанджали описал восемь составных частей йоги и практические методы йоги. Это естественное регулирование нервной системы, дисциплина, очищение, позы, концентрация, созерцание, пробуждение сознания и состояние идеального равновесия. Оказывается, какой тип йоги подходит каждому человеку, согласно особенности его конституции.
most of the modern illnesses because modern medicine has eliminated many of the infectious diseases the overall you know living conditions have improved but these diseases what we call as the lifestyle disorders are really going to be the problem of the future you know in the long run diabetes creates a lot of complications i mean when you look at diabetes it's not just the high blood sugar that you have to control by popping a pill i mean diabetes is the precursor for so many serious conditions like diabetes retinopathy cardiovascular disease kidney damage nerve damage as they call as diabetic neuropathy and one of the strong areas of ayurveda is you know uh, interventions that can prevent diabetes from going into these complications all of a sudden we wake up in the morning and we discover that something is wrong we go to doctor and we notice that after checking blood our blood sugar is high and we are labeled as diabetes but this doesn't happen overnight it is a sequential process modern science or modern medicine we have no clue how it happens in a sequential manner ayurveda tells us that there are six stages called shat kriya kal these six stages tell us that how this is progresses from first stage to next stage to next stage to finally getting expressed as a disease like in diabetes first the imbalance happens say in one dosha okay the then this this dosha will accumulate that's stage 1 after that it sort of gets into a state of agitation that's stage 2 stage 3 is that it spreads into the body stage 4 it goes into a vulnerable area up to this point ayurved can actually reverse everything because stage 5 is the manifestation of disease stage 6 is a manifestation of complications so an ayurvedic physician when he is looking at you he is actually being able to recognize you at each stage so that the disease can actually be reversed the cause can actually be taken away shuklastavaste janmado visheshana eva vishakramehi taishta tisra prakrutayo hina matyo tama pradak this is what vagbada says about prakriti and this prakriti is actually the most modern concept of modern science this talks about this genotypes phenotypes etc and even today there are talk there are talks about medicine dosage form suiting to the personality type they say that pharmacogenomics pharmacogenomics nothing but pharmacy or medicine which suit the particular genotypic or phenotypic person pharmacogenomics actually understands that different people have different genetic makeup and therefore they will need different kinds of treatments now but modern medicine and modern science have no clue how to stratify or how to uh, classify people into different categories so that a different set of people can get different medicines everything in medicine is expensive including the doctor who you see the consultation and the doctor then you know puts himself in a very fancy clinic and a fancy hospital which is also expensive so he has to take care of those expenses then the machines are expensive the medicines are horribly expensive uh, you know all the multinationals that are putting drugs in actually the actual cost of medicine is very small you know but the duties and everything that they bring it up to a large level because they have to take care of their research costs you know contemporary ayurveda consists of proprietary ayurvedic formulations that are validated by modern science in early 30s there was no medicine that brought down blood pressure there was no anti hypertensive medicine the only way to bring down blood pressure was to drain blood So the first anti-hypertensive product given to the world was given by the founder of Himalaya Drug Company. It was made from the root of a plant called Rovolfia serpentina. Subsequently, Seba extracted the active principle or the chemical that was responsible for bringing down blood pressure, and that chemical was called Rezepin. Modern medicine is based on three things. Either we use poison to poison the bacteria or the cells or we use surgery to cut out things or we use radiation to to radiate the tissue right now they are effective most of the time but they are very invasive and they are very expensive so though that is the good and bad of modern medicine if we take ayurveda the way it has been known or the all the herbal medicines and there are people in government institutions and privately who have actually done the pharmacopoeia on herbal medicine that we apply modern scientific techniques to mod, to herbal medicine and try to make an amalgam between the two not only as complementary but as a fusion that i think that there is room to fuse modern medicine and herbal medicine uh, 
to achieve two things one that your therapies will be equally good or more or more effective two they will be imminently more human friendly so that you don't have to cut out the body or you don't have to use x-ray and all that and third it would be half the price Поскольку мы двигаем прогресс 21 веке, то можно с уверенностью сказать, что аэровидическая медицина распространилась по всему миру, вызвав международные интересы и уважение в качестве альтернативного способа лечения физического и психического здоровья. In, uh, and I have seen the limits of, uh, of, our, of our treatments, especially in a normal, uh, in, let's say, in a general practitioner practice, because you can see that many diseases are due to the fact that people really don't take care of their bodies and their minds. So I was very lucky to be able to follow, to inscribe in rule in a very good school in Milan, which is a four-year program an introduction to medi um, Ayurvedic medicine. And we do our internship here in uh, Kerala, in Trishur, which is all, every year a very interesting and profound uh, experience. We are here also because uh, the technique is nothing without the real knowledge. The real knowledge is uh, connected with uh, the cognitive uh, process and the way people think. And since our body, as Ayurveda teach, is not a system of organs, but is a system of relationship, we come here to modify our way of thinking. And in such a way that we can deeply understand Ayurveda. So we, what we are trying to do is to reach the deepest meaning of Ayurveda in such a way that we are able to bring it back to our country and to find the root of Ayurveda in our country, because as I said, Ayurveda is universal, it's not local. Сегодня одна из самых древних и постоянно применяющих на практике медицинских систем ищет свое место в современном мире. Глобализация Айрведи происходит не только из обнаруженных недостатков западной медицины и негативных последствий лекарственных терапии, а скорее это результат сдвига социальных структур. Есть тенденции искать медицинские системы, приближенные к природе, более человеческий облик медицины. В таких странах, как США, Германия, Франция, Великобритания, врачи используют аюрведу. В западной медицине аюрведа классифицируется как система дополнительной и альтернативной медицины. Germany is dominated by modern Western medicine, what we call allopathy in India. So any alternative therapy in Germany has problems to establish itself to get well known. Um, we do it, we are, but I mean one of the first things is that all of us, all the doctors working here have to be Western, what in India we call MBBS doctors, they have to be Western medical doctors because otherwise in Germany you don't get a license to practice, you're just not allowed to practice on patients. The Ayurveda clinic uh, Kassel is a clinical hospital department in Germany where we can practice Ayurvedic medicine. One of the unique features of this department is that we are part of a hospital, of a larger German hospital. The whole hospital has about 350 beds. Out of these 350 beds, the Ayurvedic department has a ward of 30 beds. It has a large therapy section where oil and sweating therapies are done. And in addition, the third one is the Ayurvedic department has its own kitchen and its own dining hall, which is separate from the hospital dining hall. Food is very important, how they should adapt their food, how they should use their food. And it's not that the food has to be Indian necessarily. Everything that grows in Germany and is part of the German food can be used, but it has to be used in context, in context of the patient, in context of the disease, in context of the season. I see why our medical doctors are coming to our training. They're coming because they have lost their Dharma, as you say. You know, 
they once studied medicine because they wanted to do something for humanity. Then they ended up in a technical medicine. Now they're coming to our trainings in Ayurvedic medicine because they're finding back their, you know, back to their own profession and they're finding back to their own mission in life they want to share. And same with the patients. The patients in the moment coming to Ayurveda, they need to have a doctor having time to really understand their problems. Ayurveda in Germany is mostly known as a wellness system and uh, people don't know it's a medical system and what I feel is a big problem it's not accepted by the government as a medical system so it's not covered by the health insurance and German patients are used to having everything covered by health insurance so they're not used to paying for medical care and that is actually one of the main problems in Ayurveda I would say because actually it's not expensive but people are not used to pay for their health. The first insurance company in Germany just recently had a discussion with me how to you know, build up a framework to implement uh, Ayurveda in their portfolio. Uh, the European Society for Quality in Healthcare just recently opened a department for Ayurveda and complementary medicine. Then the universities are now taking up also research and when you see all that, then you can be assured that Ayurveda has a great future in our countries. Успех в использовании Аюрведы на Западе в значительной степени проистекает из возможности приспособить западную аллопатическую модель в Аюрведе. Во многих больницах Germany is not the same as India, or Europe is not the same as India. We have a different climate, we have different nutrition uh, habits, we have some different genes. So what's also uh, of interest, of, of much interest, is we have to adapt a little bit to the European or to the American conditions. Perhaps not everything is the same, uh, perhaps an, a, a treatment that works in Mumbai or in Delhi very well will happen to, to, to be adapted a little bit in Berlin or in New York City. We started now with the, um, within the frame of our cooperation, also with the Indian government, which we are, about which we are very thankful. Um, we started to treat patients now. We are sure that we will have some uh, good results and then we will start to implement it into the European health care system. Om Trambakam Yajamahe Sugandim Pushtivardhanam Urvarugam Ivabandhanam Mrityor Mukshiya what we see today uh, in Western countries and also globally is a trend towards um, integration, towards integrative medicine. And um, for our understanding um, in the universitarian setup, that does not mean, um, you know, a sort of random integration of therapeutic elements, but it means the integration um, of uh, the best possible therapeutic tools for our individual patients out of the mixture of different therapeutic modes. If I have a patient here in the hospital um, who comes with a certain disease, a certain health problem, a certain health condition, that we take elements from different systems of medicine. Suppose we have a patient who comes in with rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis of the knee, so joint and bone disorders, and um, asks us for help or for our uh, medical advice, this patient will of course also receive Ayurvedic treatment, Abhyanga, Swedana, maybe some um, Ayurvedic herbal treatments. And we will also um, take uh, advice from our yoga specialists who will, who will then come and see which joints are affected and he will give his advice on certain yoga sanas which might be beneficial. Аюрведа может дополнять или входить в состав других медицинских систем. 
бороться с негативными последствиями традиционной медицины, а также ускорять этап восстановления. I'm a gynecologist and an obstetrician, so I tried to find holistic concepts for the treatment in gynecology and um, obstetrics. We deal with a pregnant women like with patients, and th this is wrong. But we can help them to um, have a good pregnancy, to have a good time, using also these techniques of uh, natural herbs, of um, meditation, of yoga during pregnancies. Also, we start to teach the mothers uh, to apply Ayurvedic massage uh, to their newborn babies every day. This moment they start with the massage, the babies are very quiet, very relaxed and this is, a, I think, a very important and pleasant atmosphere. Айруведа, будучи целостной формой медицины, имеет близкое сходство с европейскими медицинскими традициями. Поэтому европейцы все больше принимают эту древнюю медицинскую систему хорошего самочувствия и баланса как средство исцеления, поддержания здоровья и профилактики болезней. I'm working as a general doctor in the countryside, as a family doctor, and uh, I think that there are many illnesses where the normal medicine has no, no solution, so uh, I'm just working for the last few years together with my husband, uh, and if there are some cases where we don't find any solutions, I just ask him to, to help us with Ayurveda. The development uh, of Ayurveda in Europe is, I think, really something which will be a type of pioneer work now, because it's not here at the moment. A wellness Ayurveda is here, but uh, medical Ayurveda uh, only a few doctors do. Um, as you've been to the Charité in Berlin, uh, Castle Clinic, in Germany there's more development. I'm one of the few doctors in Austria who are doing really with the medical tradition. And I think that's also an interesting point of view, to develop Ayurveda, be on the first front and change things to something better. Аюрведа продолжает быстро расти, как одна из самых важных медицинских систем разум тела и естественного исцеления. Как потребность в природных методах лечения, профилактики заболеваний, а также потребность в более духовном отношении к жизни становится еще более важным направлением в этом экологическом возрасте. Is not of as a profession but as a service. That to the extent that one should be able to treat a patient as his own son, his own child. If your karmas, if your uh, work that you are doing is conducive for these two, stress and prayers, you are a good human being. That is the purpose of life.
На протяжении ста осеней нам можно видеть. На протяжении ста осеней нам можно жить. На протяжении ста осеней нам можно узнавать. На протяжении ста осеней нам можно подрастать. Thank you.